Hi everybody, today we're working on Foundations Unit 12, Week 1, Day 5. And the objective is that we will be learning how to break apart and build words with more than one syllable, and we will read a new story to practice fluency. We're going to start with our sound drill. Remember to say the letter or letters, the keyword, and the sound along with me. B, bat, b. L, lamp, l. S, snake, s. S, bugs, z. X, fox, x. T, h, thumb, th. A, apple, a. A, safe, a. E, ed, e. E, peat, e. I, itch, e. I, pine, i. O, octopus, ah. O, home, o. U, up, a. Uh. U, mule, u. U, rule, u. And now for our R controlled vowel drill. A, R, car, r. O, R, horn, or. E, R, her, er. I, R, bird, er. U, R, burn, er. And now for our vowel teams. A, I, bait, A. A, Y, play, A. E, E, jeep, E. E, A, eat, E. E, Y, key, E. O, I, coin, oi. O, Y, boy, oi. O, A, boat, O. O, E, toe, O. O W snow O O W plow ow O U trout ow O U soup oo O O school oo U E blue oo U E rescue you E W chew ew A U August ah A W saw ah Great job. Remember, if you need to practice those sounds, you can rewind the video and watch it again, or you can pause the video and practice with the posters. For our trick word today, our trick word review today, I'm going to tell you to find a word that is spelled a certain way, and then you want to be able to read that word. So I'll tell you the spelling, you find the word, and read it. After we read it, we'll cross it out. Okay, find the trick word that's spelled O V E R. Do you know the word? Over. O V E R. Find the trick word that's spelled O T H E R. O T H E R. Other. O T H E R. Other. Okay, find the word that's spelled W-H-O, W-H-O. Do you know the word? It's who, W-H-O, who. Find the word that's spelled T-O-O, T-O-O. -O. Here it is, two. Find the word that's spelled a N O T H E R. A N O T H E R. Another. A N O T H E R. Another. Find the word that's spelled B E T W E E N. B E T W E E N. Between, B E T W E E N. Between. Find the word that's spelled S E E. S E E. C S E E. Find the word that's spelled W O U L D. W O U L D. Wood, 
W O U L D, would. Okay, let's do one more. Find the word that's spelled F R I E N D. F R I E N D. Friend. F R I E N D. Friend. Great job. <clears throat> Next, we're going to do a word of the day review. Word of the day is special words that we've looked at many times before. All of the words that are on the screen are review. You've already seen them before. We've practiced them and spelled them before. So take a second, read all eight of the words that are on the screen. Okay, now what we're going to do is we're going to go through each word and see what we can find inside of it. This is a review of our marking that we do on words, but also just making sure we know the sounds and we can break apart these words on our own. So the first word we have is k, all, call. What do you see inside of the word call? You might see the glued sound, A-L-L, -L, ball, all. Do you see anything else? That's right. You should also see the bonus letter L. If you mark the bonus letter, that's fine. If you don't, that's also fine because as long as you've marked the glued sound, you've, you've got the marking that you need for that word. If you mark both, even better. All right, let's look at our next word. Clump. And then I already see a suffix S, so I'll go ahead and circle it because we always circle our suffixes. Okay, now, now that the suffix S is circled, we're just going to focus on the base word. Clump. Clump. What do you notice in the word clump that we should mark? Yes, that's right. There is a blend. What's the blend that you see? You see the MP? Mp. Mp. Do you see anything else? You see the CL blending? K -l. So now we have k. Uh, mm, p, clump, and we can underline our entire base word, and then we have our suffix s circled. Clumps. Next word, f, e, l, fill. What do you see in this word? Yes, another bonus letter. We'll just start it. Next word, k, qu, e, t, quit. Qua, it, quit. What do you see in this word? A buddy letter. How do we mark a buddy letter? We haven't done this in a little while. How do we mark a buddy letter? We can circle it. Great job. All right, now up here. Qua, e, k. Qua, e, what do you see in this word? A buddy letter again. Great job noticing that buddy letter again. Anything else? Yes, the CK digraph. So we've got our buddy letter circled and we've got our CK digraph underlined. Remember that we underline the digraphs as one line, which is different than when we underlined our blends over here because a blend is two sounds that are sort of starting to blend together and mix together but a digraph is two letters that are only making one sound, so they only get one line. All right, next word. Slept. Slept. What do you see in this word? I see a blend too. What blend do you see? Do you see SL? Slept. Oh, also PT. Two different blends. Great job. All right, let's look at our next word. Ch, e, u, ch, e, u, chill. Ah, another bonus letter, that's right. Anything else? A ch digraph, ch chinch. And again, we know that digraphs get one underlined together because it's making, it's two letters making just one sound. All right, last word, ang. Hang, hang. What do you see in this word? A and G are glued sound. Box it up. Hang, 
Pang. Great job helping me read those words and find all the markings that we possibly could. Okay, so now today we have a new story time. The story is called, can you read it? Yes, the, this, the title is Jackson, Jackson. So today we're going to practice reading it together. We'll look for the characters, the setting, the events, um, and then we'll read it again. So the story is Jackson. Go ahead and follow along with me for this read. If you wanna try it by yourself first, you can pause, or after we read it together once, then you can pause and try it by yourself. But definitely take the time to read it on your own as well, not only with me. <clears throat> Ed had a pet dog, Jackson. Jackson was Ed's best friend. They got up at sunrise. Just when Ed was finishing a pancake, Jackson came to him with a ball. Ed put on his jacket and they went out. Jackson and Ed had fun with the ball. Then the ball went into a bucket of mud in the sandbox. Jackson did not see it. He dug in the sand but did not get the ball. It was not there. Then the bucket fell over and the ball fell out. The mud fell out too and it landed on Jackson. He was a mess. At sunset, Jackson and Ed had a nap. It was a fun day. Great reading. Before we label our character setting in our events, let's read it one more time. Good readers always reread stories. The more you read it, the more that your brain is able to think about what's happening. You're able to get a picture in your head of what's going on, and you're able to understand what all of those different story elements are. So we'll read it one more time, and then we'll talk about our story elements and get them labeled. All right, starting from the beginning. Ed had a pet dog, Jackson. Jackson was Ed's best friend. They got up at sunrise. Just when Ed was finishing a pancake, Jackson came to him with a ball. Ed put on his jacket and they went out. Jackson and Ed had fun with the ball. Then the ball went into a bucket of mud in the sandbox. Jackson did not see it. He dug in the sand, but did not get the ball. It was not there. Then the bucket fell over and the ball fell out. The mud fell out too, and it landed on Jackson. He was a mess. At sunset, Jackson and Ed had a nap. It was a fun day. Great job reading with me. Now, the first thing I wanna look for is the characters. And we have this story stone here that we can use for any of the characters. What characters are in our story? Good. We have Jackson and we have Ed. So I'm going to put this story stone right here because Jackson is there and Ed is there. Now, how are Jackson and Ed different types of characters? Okay, so we know Ed is a person. He's a human. So then if Ed is a human, what is Jackson? Jackson is his dog. Good. So we know that characters can be people, they can be animals, or they could be other things. In this story, we've just got our two characters. One is a person named Ed, and then one is a dog named Jackson. Now, setting. We know that the setting is where the story takes place. Where is the setting in this story? You might think it's outside. For part of the story, it is outside. Is there any other setting? Yes, it's also in the house. So we can put our setting right here because we, we know that at the beginning of this paragraph, they were inside the house eating breakfast. And then in, at the end of this paragraph is when they went out. It doesn't actually tell us that they were inside the house, but we know that they just woke up and they were eating their pancakes. And most people, when they're just waking up in the morning are probably sleeping inside of their house. And it says they went out. If it tells us that they went out, that means before they were in. So they had to have been inside their house before they were able to go out to play ball. All right, now the events. We have one for what happens at the beginning, two for what happens at the middle, and then three for what happens at the end. So what do you think happened first? Okay, sure, we can put the first event up here because first they ate their breakfast and then they went outside. Hmm, where did my number go? 
Oops, I lost my number one. All right, we'll put our number one up here. I don't know where it keeps disappearing to. Oh, I know what's happening. I need to make sure it comes to the front because it's going behind the story for some reason. Okay. So we'll put our number one right up here. So we can say the first thing that happened is that they woke up and they ate their breakfast and then they went outside. So now we know Jackson and Ed were eating. They, well, they woke up, they ate, they went outside. Now, the next thing that happened, what happened in the middle? What happened in the middle? Okay, so the next thing that happened is that they were playing ball and it fell into a bucket of mud. We don't know where the ball went, right? They're outside, they're play they went and played ball and the ball fell into the mud and they don't know where it went. And then what happened last? What was our third event? What was the third thing that happened in our story? All right, so then the ball fell over, the ball fell out of the bucket and the mud got all over Jackson and he became a mess. So in our story, we know they woke up and ate breakfast, they went outside to play ball and the ball got lost in the mud. And then at the end, the ball and the mud fell over Jackson and he became a total mess. So that's what happens in the story. If we were retelling the story to someone who hadn't heard it, we would wanna tell those three major events. We don't have to tell them every single little teeny tiny detail. When you're doing a retell, you want to make sure that you're telling the main events of the story. All right. Now, I wanted us to break apart and look at some of the words that we had in our story. So take a second and see if you can read these four words on your own. All of these words are two syllable words and we've learned that we can find syllables by feeling our breath. Every time we have a breath, it's a different part of a word, which is a different syllable. We can use our chin and count our chin drops, or we can clap the word and count, count the syllables that way. So we're going to read these words and we're going to practice marking so that on the next slide, when we go and it's your turn, you'll remember how we do the marking because we haven't done it in them in a little while and we haven't done it really in this lesson yet. All right, so our first word, we should recognize this word because it was the title of the story and we can see that it's capitalized, so it's definitely an important word. We've got j, a, k, s, a, n. What's the word? Jackson. So in this one, we find the vowel and then we wanna make sure the vowel is closed. Next to the vowel is the C, but this is actually a CK digraph, so I'm going to underline that and make sure it's together. Then we'll scoop Jack, then we've got son, Jackson, and that's his name. We know it's closed. And then we can put our breves for our short vowel sounds. All right, next word. B, a, k, it. Here's our U vowel. There's the C closing it off, but it's a CK digraph, so I'll again underline that together. Then I can scoop, so I've got buck, and then I've got it. So the word is bucket. Close syllable, mark it with a C. Close syllable, mark it with a C. Breve for the short sound, breve for the short sound. All right, next word, s, a, n, s, e, t, sunset. You closed off by the N, scoop it, sun. The E is closed off by the T, scoop it, set. Sunset. Practice feeling your breath on that one. Sunset. How many breaths did you have? Two. Practice saying it and feeling your chin drop. Sunset. How many times did your chin drop? Two. Then when you practice with your clapping, sunset. How many claps? Two. So that's a two syllable word. Mark it C for closed. Mark it C for closed. Breve on the U because it's a short vowel, uh. Breve on the E because it's a short vowel, eh. Last one. S, A, N, D, B, A, X. Hmm, this one's a little trickier. So we have an A, N, AN in this word. That means that this is our sound, but we still need to make sure it's closed off. 
So I'm going to put the D with it, sand, and then we'll put box, sand box. So we do not put a breve on this because the A isn't saying a, ah, it's with the N, the glued sound, an. So we don't need to mark this one with a breve, but it is closed. And then over here, our O vowel, b, a, it's saying the short vowel sound, I'll mark it with a breve, and it's closed off by the X, so I'll mark that closed. So that's a little bit of a new thing we haven't done before, is we don't need to mark this, the vowel in this word because it's not the short vowel sound. It's a glued sound there. Okay, so now it's your turn to practice. Remember at this part of our lesson, you can use a pencil and paper, whiteboard and marker. If I'm going too fast and you need to pause, pause. If, you, if it's too fast, you need to hear it again, rewind and hear it again. Today you have three trick words, three unit words, and one sentence. The sentence is a little bit long today, so make sure you have plenty of space on your paper for your writing. As always, remember to listen carefully to the words and the sentence. Tap it out. Trick words you can't tap out, so you just have to use your memory. But unit words you can tap out, so tap them out and make sure you've got that spelling just right. Write it on your paper, and after you've got it written, go back and get everything marked up. So our trick words today, the first word is try try like i'm going to try some food i don't like try the second trick word is my like that is my dog my the third trick word is by like i set my pencil by my paper so your trick words are try my and by you should notice something the same in all of those. Okay, now for our three unit words. I'll give you a little bit of a hint. All of these words have two syllables. So make sure when you're scooping, you're finding both syllable. The first word is nutmeg. Nutmeg is a kind of spice. Nutmeg. The second word is insult. Insult. An insult is like when you say something rude to somebody. Insult. And the third word is admit, admit. When you admit something, it's like maybe you did something wrong and you're telling the truth about it, or maybe you said a lie and you're saying that you, you are telling the truth about that lie. So that word again is admit. So right now you should check your paper. You should have try, my, buy, nutmeg, insult, and admit. Okay, now for the sentence. The sentence has one, two, three, four, five, six, seven words. So if you wanna give yourself seven lines to make sure you've got each word, that's another strategy. Remember how we start sentences and how we end them. They always start with something specific and they always end with something. Don't forget the beginning of the sentence. Don't forget the end of the sentence. You need both to make sure it's a perfect sentence. All right, the sentence today is, Stan planted a rose for his friend. Stan planted a rose for his friend. Stan planted a rose for his friend. Maybe Stan has a garden. Maybe he's putting outside his friend's house. But anyways, Stan planted a rose for his friend. All right. Very good job on today's work. And I will see you next time. Bye-bye.